In today's world, people are more disconnected than ever. Anxiety, loneliness, and depression are rampant, and young people are desperate for meaningful relationships. From the beginning, EDGE has created opportunities for people to develop in their personal, professional, and spiritual lives. My relationship with my mentor is awesome. Shout out to Jason. You know, he's there for me uh, in terms of any questions I have, both uh, professionally and personally. Earlier this year, my dad had uh, COVID and he was one of the first people to, to check in with me uh, regarding that. So it's, it's nice to know that he cares about me as a whole human being. EDGE continues to provide ways for you to develop as a whole person, to grow yourself and to find your role in your community and make an impact. EDGE offers a variety of programs and events to provide community and safe spaces for whole person development to occur. EDGE groups, EDGE work, and EDGE events are our current product offerings, but we are always looking to expand as a way to better serve our community and to be able to positively impact more lives. We believe that people grow better together. We are all made for community. Once you have expressed interest in participating in an EDGE group, we will pair you with five to seven other young professionals and a carefully selected EDGE trained mentor. And together, you will navigate life, including personal growth, career development, and faith. EDGE group participants commit to a one hour virtual gathering with their group every other week for one year. And because EDGE Groups is a virtual program, you can experience the power of intergenerational mentoring from anywhere. I'm Tony McEwen. I work for Corteva AgriScience, and I lead our global HR service centers. I do think I have the best EDGE group because these women are constantly showing up for one another. So while I'm technically the mentor, there's a lot of moments where I sit back and I don't say a lot, and they just speak into each other's lives. Edge at Work is a one-year cohort-based program that focuses strictly on personal and professional development. Leveraging a curriculum that we co-created with Butler University, emerging leaders are provided a safe space to focus on their own personal and professional development. We focus on everything from mental wellness to overcoming failure and self-limiting behaviors to receiving feedback and managing change. Edge Events is where our entire community comes together. Events are the glue that bring folks from all of our programs together to share life, learn from each other, and address relevant topics within our lives and communities. I struggled in my early 20s with figuring out you have to take ownership of your career and choices. I mean, I think EDGE really helped me gain clarity to make those choices. I wanted to get involved because I frankly wish I would have had something like this 20 years ago when I started my career. If you are a young person who is looking for deeper connection and community, Edge is for you. For those more seasoned, we are always in need of strong mentors. Your life experiences should be shared with others. If you are a business owner or executive and would like to provide a unique opportunity to your employees, Edge at Work would aid in their own personal and professional development journeys. Learn more about how we can partner with you at edgementoring.org. Kristen K.B. Newton has been a fixture at EdgeX for years, spinning tunes and spreading her energy and positivity. She has also been an Edge mentor and understands the importance of relationship and community. In fact, she founded Heart Combos, where she speaks and teaches on navigating relationships and tough conversations. At a time when isolation and loneliness are crippling millennials, the world needs K.B. and her practical insights around forging and maintaining meaningful relationships. Thanks, Todd, so much. Your words are kind. I'm really excited to be here on the EDGEX stage as a speaker with you guys today. Um, what I know is true for all of us is that 2020 has revealed a lot of things. And that mainly is that we don't know how to build deep, meaningful connections. Our friendships aren't thriving the way that we thought that they would. Maybe our marriages aren't as strong as, as we hoped. Our company cultures aren't impacting the people the way that we, we want them to. And on top of that, Systems that we've worked really, really hard to build are being torn down, churches are divided, our government is at war. And uh, on top of all of that, some of us are really struggling in isolation right now. We've found ourselves socially distanced um, and we're, we're really struggling internally. Um, and we're looking for a relationship, we're looking to build deep, meaningful connections, but we just, we don't know how to do that. 
But what if I could suggest that the key to building deep, meaningful connections is through having intentional conversations? You might be thinking, I'm tired of talking. All I've been doing this 2020 is talking. But maybe you're not having the right conversations, the heart conversations. Around the top of April of this year, since we were on stay-at-home orders, I thought, well, maybe it'll be a good idea to start working out. Um, now, it's one thing to say, okay, I wanna be more active, but no, that's not what I did. I committed to 100 workouts in the course of 100 days. <laughs> one workout a day for 100 days, it's called this morning meltdown, foolish, don't even look it up, it's, it's awful. Um, <laughs> but I said, I wanna start working out, so I'm going to do this program. Now, I found myself around day 23, 24, 25, thinking to myself, I should do a before and after picture. Because if it's not working, I'm not gonna finish. <laughs> so I got my picture that I took from before. I'm quite embarrassed to even say that I didn't own a sports bra at the time <laughs> because I'm, I don't work out. Um, but here we were on day 25 of this workout and I put the pictures alongside of one another and sure enough, go figure. If you do a little bit every day, change starts to happen. I could see my waist it kind of come in a little bit. Um, I saw some definition forming in my back and I was like, man, just 30 minutes a day will really, will really make a change, right, in, in my, my health. Well, I think if, and I actually know for a fact, if I hadn't seen that change, I would not have seen the, the workouts all the way through. And I think some of us are feeling that way as it pertains to our conversations. We're looking at the before and the after of what we've been talking about maybe since March, April, May of this year. And here we are at the end of the year thinking nothing has really changed. We keep having the same conversations about the same things and we're not seeing, seeing anything happen. And that can be very, very frustrating. It can be discouraging to go into meetings over and over again for an hour at a time to talk about change, to talk about new plans, to talk about diversity rollouts and all of the things, but not really feel like the hearts of the people in the room are being changed or really that what we're talking about is going to make a difference um, as we move forward. But we've all been there, right? We've all been in that space where we're having the meeting, we're sharing with our boss who's encouraging us to be honest and to give feedback, only to be weighing in our minds, what will this cost me? What will it cost me to be honest? What will it cost me to really give you my opinion about the elephant in the room? What will it cost me to show up as my most authentic self or to address the real issues in real time right now? What will it cost me to be vulnerable? I was talking to a friend the other day and she had had a meeting at work and her boss reached out afterward and said, hey, what did you think about the meeting? Now, shortly before this phone call, she had expressed to me <laughs> that she thought the meeting was a really long meeting, unnecessary meeting <laughs> about things that didn't really matter. Was she going to say that to her boss when her boss called though? I highly doubt it <laughs> because as much as we value honesty, we don't necessarily encourage it with the cultures that we create at work. We don't actually live up to it when people ask us, hey, how was your day? Simple things. We're not having these conversations. Um, and I think that we need to be. We need to be having conversations that matter. We need to be having conversations that move the needle forward. And those conversations are what I like to call heart conversations. Conversations that are honest, elephant-sized, authentic, real, and transparent. If you really be wanting to have the impact that you talk about having in your company culture, in your relationships, in your marriages, in your friendships, then you have to be having heart conversations. Now, committing to have, having these types of conversations every single day may feel like committing to 100 workouts in 100 days. It's ridiculous. Um, it's overwhelming. Um, it can be a lot. However, that is how you make the change. And I'm gonna explain how you do that very, very simply. So let's walk through what it looks like to have heart conversations. Honesty, right? Honesty is the best policy, is what we say, right? I have a three-year-old daughter right now. She's learning um, how to communicate, right? She's learning the alphabet, three, four letter words. She actually has several syllable words under her belt. Um, she thinks she knows it all at three. But I understand that the the routine of learning the alphabet and listening to songs and all of the things that are, are, can be annoying and redundant are really going to set her up well if she continues to do the work 
down the line to write a book, to be an orator, to, to discover something as a researcher. If she does her work now to learn her ABCs and her three and four letter words, she will be put in a position to really soar later in a more complicated space. And I would suggest that you know how to have conversations, you're having them. However, if you don't understand the core basic fundamentals to having conversations that matter and conversations that lead to deep, meaningful connections, that you won't really be able to thrive down the line. You'll find yourself having empty conversations and doing a lot of talking, but not feeling like you're getting the outcome that you want. So when we think about being honest, right, it's just telling the truth. Why are we so uncomfortable with telling the truth? I think it's because truth is not something that we really value as a culture and society, and we're seeing it now. Um, I recently was watching the news after the Democratic convention and Michelle Obama had given us a, a speech and people were just celebrating the fact that she really esteemed character in her talk. Well, who sits around building multi-million dollar, you know, platforms and success, you know, on the basis of character? We would say that that's not really a, a core part of who we are as a culture, I don't think that we would say that. We would say hard work is, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, like getting ahead, advancement, up and to the right. That is what we do. But she kept pointing to the heart of us as people and our character as people and encouraging that. So as the, the guy was kind of debriefing what went well that particular night, he said, character is not always the center of conversation in our, in, in our talks, however, Amidst the pandemic, character is costing people their lives. Poor character is costing people their lives. A person can say, oh, I don't really care to think about the person next to me any given day. When you're in a pandemic, if you are not caring about the person next to you any given day, it could cost them their life. When the stakes are higher, the things that we don't push, push to the forefront matter the most. And so honesty, as it pertains to our conversations with people, is really the only reason to be having a conversation. If you're not gonna be honest, then why are we talking? However, what have we been doing prior to our current conditions? Having conversations, saying the things that, that we think people want us to say, and not really uh, valuing honesty. And so telling the truth is huge. The second element of having a heart combo is my favorite, and it's elephant-sized conversations. It can go two ways. It can be addressing an elephant in the room, or it can be addressing an elephant-sized issue. So we all sit down you know, to have our conversation about the latest thing that we've seen go viral on, on, on social media. And sometimes it makes us feel uncomfortable, but we all know that it's happened and we know that we need to talk about it, but until we've rolled out a release or an official you know, politically correct statement, we don't wanna you know, bring anything up because we don't wanna make people feel uncomfortable. Well, let me just you know, say this, it's already uncomfortable. The elephant is already in the room. The issue has already presented itself. We should take some time to really dissect it. Now, how do you get on top of an elephant? I would assume you don't run and jump. I'm just, I mean, I've never tried it, but I assume that you would maybe do it one step at a time, right? To climb on top of it. And I think that that, that is what we should be doing in our conversations. We should be addressing the issues at, of, we should be addressing the elephant in the room but one conversation at a time in an effort to get on top of it. The A in heart combos um, is authentic. I don't know about you, but sometimes um, I think about what people think about me, right? I wonder how I'm going to be perceived. I get set up with a meeting somewhere and I spend a lot of time thinking about what should I wear or should I just show up as my most authentic self is usually the question. Um, what will it cost me to do that? Well. I think that sometimes we do a lot for people that we don't even like. <laughs> we completely adjust our life, our way of being, the way we talk, the way we do our hair, um, for people that we, we really don't even care for. And why is that? Why are we afraid to show up as our most authentic self? I think part of that has to do with the fact that we might be rejected. <laughs> and not just rejected literally, like I might get fired from my job if I don't adhere to whatever standard has been created for acceptable here. But also in our personal relationships, what if they don't like who I really am? So then we spend a lot of time pretending. We get comfortable, the person likes us, we think, and then our 
authentic self starts to show up and now there's a point of tension because our authentic self might be different from the person that they've seen and now we're caught in between a rock and a hard place. I think 2020 has surfaced that for us in a lot of ways. Expose that whoever you were before all of this happened <laughs> is not who you are right now. 2020 has brought out a lot in us and I think in our conversations with one another, we should be valuing showing up as our most authentic self. The R in heart combo stands for real. So this is not about just being real, it's about addressing real issues in real time. I'm married uh, about nine years and um, sometimes we get into what I like to call passionate discussions or arguments or fights or whatever you wanna call it. And um, we don't always stay on topic. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. You get into a, a spat with your spouse or someone that you love and you start talking about one thing, but then eventually you're talking about what happened three months ago <laughs> uh, because you never addressed it in real time and now it's just surfacing because you've been triggered. That happens all the time in our conversation. So we can't really get anywhere because the issue that is the issue today, we're not addressing. We're addressing the issue that happened three months ago which even if we could change what happened three months ago, it doesn't affect the fact that there's an issue today. So real conversations are what we should be having. And lastly, transparent conversations are what we should be having. Conversations that allow people to see through to the things that they wouldn't see unless we otherwise expose them. But we have our guard up. We don't want to be vulnerable. The very definition of vulnerability means to be exposed to put yourself in a position to be wounded. That intel is why you are vulnerable. However, there's no way in a meeting in front of all of the team that I'm leading as the CEO or as the area of director, I'm going to get up and be vulnerable and say, I actually have absolutely no idea how to address the problems that we're facing and honestly have done some self work and realized that I'm a part of the problem. I don't know how to lead my team through this. No one is saying that. However, I think if we did say that in our meetings, maybe we would have an opportunity to surface real issues in real time, encourage everyone to show up as their most authentic self and then move forward with plans that, that really make change. All of this can sound like a lot, but it's not. It's super simple. The way that you engage heart combos every single day is one, learning the acronym, learning that your conversation should be honest, elephant size, authentic, real, and transparent every single conversation. The second thing you should do is just put that into practice every day. Make it a part of who you are. If you think about the process of growth for us as people, we don't grow overnight. And growth doesn't always happen again with big boisterous efforts to make change. It's just the small daily disciplines to continue to lean in, to continue to fail forward, right? To continue to try and to put, and to put your best foot, foot out there. I think that all of us can, can, can find ourselves on the scale of growth in some way. I like to break it up into four areas where we think about our unconscious ignorance, those things that we don't even know that we, we don't know, right? There are things that you don't even know you, you don't know. And so we're, we're unconsciously ignorant about some things. But in the process of growth, we move from that unconscious ignorance to conscious ignorance. Well, we recognize, oh, there are things I don't know. But then from conscious ignorance, we move to conscious competence, where we realize, I didn't know this before, but now that I know this, I have the ability to change. I have the ability to start putting these things that I'm learning in place and function in a conscious space. That is a conscious competence develop, or place of development in, in this, on the spectrum. But then I think the goal for all of us is to get to a place where we are unconsciously competent. It's no longer something you have to think about. It's just who you are. It's a part of what you do. I liken it to learning how to ride a bike, which recently, that's not something that kids are doing nowadays. I don't know if you guys knew that. Kids aren't actually playing outside or learning how to ride bikes. And so I have nieces and nephews um, recently that were learning how to ride a bike, six, eight, and 10. And to, to see them out there trying to put together the art of pedaling, steering, and balance all at once was hilarious. <laughs> because they couldn't do it. And so I'm trying to teach them, what does it look like to feel yourself falling this way and maybe to turn the wheel? It was too much to think about at a time. You might think, if I were to get on a bike right now and I hadn't ridden a bike in the last 20 years, it would come back like that. Why? Because you are unconscious, I mean, you are consciously competent, I'm sorry, unconsciously competent in your ability to ride a bike. 
you know how to ride a bike. It's not something you have to think about. But if you go back to that first day that you learned how to ride a bike, it seemed like a lot. I think it's the same thing with heart combos. Like me encouraging you to have these conversations that seem to be common sense, they aren't, <laughs> might feel like that's a lot to think about all at once. It's a lot to think about how to lead a team, how to like go to, into a meeting and value all of these things and then encourage the 15 people that I'm looking at to value all these things. However, if you continue to lean into it daily, you have the ability to attain that. Not just to have the conversation, but to ultimately develop community, which is the third thing that I would encourage you to do. You learn the acronym, you lean into these conversations daily, and you start to develop your community. EdgeX is an incredible space. Um, to practice this. Heart combos kind of make up, I think, the, 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 the meat of what EdgeX really stands for because EdgeX does a really good job of bringing people together for, to creating these multi-generational relationships between mentors and mentees. But if they were just bringing people together but not encouraging a specific type of culture that was honest, elephant size, authentic, real, and transparent, what would be the point of those connections? And so, all of what I've encouraged you to think about today in what does it look like to build deep, meaningful connections and what are the ingredients to really doing that really rests in heart combos, but you have not only the opportunity to think about that, but to apply that in your position with EDGE. EDGE is a space for mentors who have lived life, thought about their whole person development, really valued community, and leaned into the difficult conversations every single day. And not only have they seen the value of that in their own lives, they want to instill those same values into the people that are coming after them. I think that EDGE also gives us the opportunity not just to have the conversations, but to act. I sometimes get concerned that if we don't have heart combos, we will continue to replicate systems that don't work. We will continue to put plans in place that are not effective. We will continue to rewrite bylaws that don't really include everybody. We will see systems that aren't, aren't setting people up to be advantageous um, if they don't you know, meet certain qualifications. And all of those things that we're seeing manifest right now and the problems that they're creating won't change if we don't reset how we've been putting those systems together. I think that starts with conversation. Now, some of those conversations have to happen in groups, but I would say this, that they, they have to happen personally first. If you're not having heart conversations with yourself, evaluating your own personal narrative, where you've come from, what you believe, why you believe it, where it is that you would like to go, then I would like to suggest you might be aimlessly wandering about life. You might just kind of be going through the motions, doing what people have maybe encouraged you to do or expected you to do, but you have the ability to really sit with yourself and say, have I been honest about what it is that I, I want to do, what I'm passionate about, what kind of impact I want to make? Have I addressed my own issues, trauma, baggage, whatever it is that I bring to the table when I lean into relationships with other people? Am I showing up as my most authentic self? Am I addressing the real issues in real time or am I kind of trying to change the subject and, and, and kind of skirt around the, the, the issue? And then lastly, have I made a commitment to be transparent, to let people see into me? Um, because ultimately, we all want to be fully known and fully loved, and EDGE gives us the opportunity to do that in the context of mentee-mentor relationships. And so I want to encourage you to lean in, to become a mentor, to become a mentee, to, to lean into the values of the EDGE community. And if you don't do it here, be doing it somewhere. But I will, I will say this, please don't lean into those spaces without first having made the commitment to have the heart conversations, the heart conversations that really create change, the heart conversations that really create space for deep, meaningful connections. Again, 2020 has brought a lot out of all of us, and we're probably in the best place right now to be reevaluating how and why we do everything that we do. But that self-work that you're doing or the work that you're doing in the context of your communities and your companies and your, and your cultures won't really matter if you're not having the conversations that matter. So have the conversations, the heart conversations, and if you like, get plugged into the EDGE community and become a mentor or a mentee. I'm wishing you the best for the rest of 2020. Until next time, please remember, it's not a hard conversation to have, it's a heart conversation. <laughs>